why are Indian philosophies neglected from the mainstream philosophy? And in India, despite the fact that it had every topic like epistemology, ontology, psychology, metaphysics, physics, etc. This is an excellent question, sir. So you are absolutely right. Indian philosophy has been totally neglected in India's uh, philosophy curriculum. You go to any philosophy department in India and you see the curriculum, they'll teach you about Plato, about Aristotle, about Kant, Hegel, Hume. They will teach you Gandhian philosophy, whatever the hell that is. They'll teach you about Jiddu Krishnamurti. They will teach Dalit philosophy, whatever that is. They'll teach you about the Frankfurt School, about critical theory, about feminist uh, philosophy, etc. But they won't teach you anything significant about Indian philosophy. And Indian philosophy is way older and way richer than all of this, right? And these schools of Western philosophical thought have been borrowing from Indian philosophy for centuries without ever acknowledging the fact that they are borrow borrowing from us, right? So there are... Indian philosophy is vast. It is it is enormous. There are so many schools of thought, at least seven uh, major significant schools of thought. And we just don't know about them. We think everything comes from the West. Let me tell you a little bit about Indian philosophy. So you have seven, eight, nine schools of Indian philosophical thought, major, and there are way more uh, subsidiary, subsidiary schools and other schools. So the nine major ones are Charvaka, Jain, uh, Bodha, Nyaya, Vaisheshik, Sankhya, Yoga, Mimamsa, and Vedanta. These are, these are the nine major schools. So Charvaka is materialism. It says that perception is the only valid source of knowledge. The material world is the only reality. The existence of God is a myth. The Vedas are false and wrong. And the highest aim of life is the enjoyment of the greatest amount of pleasure. So this is pure materialism. This is Charvaka. It is one of the major schools of thought of Indian philosophy, it is part of Hinduism. So this is an atheistic school of thought. It is part of Hinduism. Then you have Jaina, the Jaina philosophy, which rejects the Charvaka view that perception is the only source of knowledge. Jaina says that inference and testimony are also valid sources. The Jaina school of thought comes from 24 Tirthankars, Tirthankars of whom the 23rd was Parshwanath and the 24th, the last one was Vardhaman Mahavir. So the Jainath school of thought believes in the believes in the existence of souls. It says souls exist. Humans, animals, plants, microorganisms, even dust grains have souls, but not every soul is equally conscious. Some are more conscious, some are less conscious. And according to the Jaina school of thought, the aim of existence is of liberation. Liberation by removing all the accumulated karmas of, of the different uh, incarnations by following the teachings of the Tirthankars, the liberated saints. And the Jaina school also is an atheistic school of thought because it rejects the existence of God. Then you have Bodhda philosophy. Bodhda philosophy is about the four noble truths. Number one, there is misery in life. Number two, there is a cause of misery. Number three, there is a cessation of misery. And number four, there is a path that leads to the cessation of misery. And this is the so-called the, the eightfold noble path of Buddhism. In Buddhism, the aim of existence is the cessation of misery, the cessation of the cycle of rebirths. It is to attain enlightenment or nirvana. Then you have Nyaya which is a school of thought that owes its existence to the great sage Gautama. This is a realistic philosophy based on logic. There are four separate sources of true knowledge, Pratyaksha, Anuman, Upamana and Shabda. It says that the self, the Atma is distinct from the mind and from the body. And again, the ultimate aim is the liberation of the soul and Nyaya believes in the existence of God. Then you have Vaisheshik, which owes its origin to the great sage and scientist Kannada. So according to Vaisheshik, there are, there are seven categories of substances, nine kinds of substances, four kinds of atoms, which are invisible, indestructible particles of matter. And therefore, the Vaisheshik school of philosophy is the first quantum theory. According to this theory, the mind is eternal. It's infinitely small, like an atom. So there is a quantum of mind as well. And the ultimate aim, again, is the liberation of the, of the soul. And according to this theory, God exists. Then you have Sankhya, 
which is dualistic realism, which owes its existence to the sage Kapil. You have yoga, which owes its existence to Patanjali, right? You have Mimansa, which owes its existence to Jaimini. It is based on the Vedas, which is again an, an atheistic school of thought, right? It says that whatever the Vedas command one to perform is dharma and what they forbid is wrong. It says the soul is immortal and eternal, but there is no supreme soul or creator God. It says that the, that the law of karma is the autonomous natural and moral law that rules the world. And finally, you have Vedanta, which arises from the Upanishads. It's considered to be the culmination of Vedic thought. According to Vedanta, there is a supreme person who permeates the entire universe and yet remains beyond the universe. So as you can see, these are different models of the universe. These are different theories. These are so uh, so detailed and, and, and these, these are vast schools of thought. You can spend an entire lifetime just researching one. And that is the entirety of Indian philosophy and there is much more beyond it. So it is, it is incredible that Indian universities, colleges, etc. do not teach about this in any detail. There is some cursory reference to these things, but unfortunately, none of this is taught, taught in any detail. And in Indian philosophy, uh, like I said, it, these are different models of the universe. These are different theories, proper theories, philosophical theories. Unfortunately, Indian philosophy stopped evolving 1000 years ago with the destruction of our great indigenous universities. And today in India's modern colonized universities, they teach Western philosophy. So that's a great tragedy. I wish this were to change sometime soon.